Hi, in this video, I'll be covering the Kubernetes service and endpoints. Now, before we dive into what a Kubernetes service is, let's try to understand the need for a resource like service. In the last video in the Kubernetes Simplified series, we learned about pods and how each pod gets its IP address. If we use deployment to run our apps, it can create and destroy pods dynamically. In short, the set of pods running in one moment could be different from the set of pods running that application a moment later. This leads to a problem. If say the pods provides backend functionality to the front end, then how does the front end know which IP address of the pods to connect to as it can change any time if new pods are created. That's where services are needed. So what is a service? It's an abstract way to expose an application running on a set of pods as a network service. In short, it sets up networking within the Kubernetes cluster. Once a service is deployed, every service gets its own stable IP address, stable DNS, and a stable port. It acts as a load balancer to pods and uses labels to dynamically select the pods to send the traffic to. Now, while creating a service, you have to specify the type of the service to be created. There are four types of services. The first one is cluster IP. It exposes a set of pods to other objects only within the cluster and not to the outside world. Second one is node port. It exposes the container to the outside world. However, it's usually good for development purposes only and not for production environment. Next is a load balancer which exposes the service externally using the cloud provider's load balancer. So if your workloads are running on cloud provider like AWS, Google Cloud, etc. When you create the service, it will create the load balancer on the cloud provider which will help route the traffic externally into the service. And the last one is external name which maps the service to the contents of the external name field for example, foo.bar.example.com by returning a CNAME record with its value. This is usually used, let's say, if you have an external database which the pods needs to connect to. In such a case, you can have a service with external name which maps to the FQDN of the database. Let's dive into some demo. As you see on the screen, I have a simple Spring Boot application called Microservice One. And it has a controller which exposes an API at slash API slash hello, which simply returns hello world and the version details. In this case, it would be version 1.0. And it also returns the IP address of the host that it is running on. So in this case, it would return the pod IP address. So the version of this app currently is 1.0. And I have created a Docker image for this application simply by running the Maven command MVN Spring Boot Build Image. And I'm using Docker Desktop for this demo. So if we take a look at Docker images, if you see the highlighted image, it's a microservice one with version 1.0. You'll also see another version of the same microservice with the tag 2.0 which is the same as the controller, just that it returns the version 2.0 and the corresponding IP address. This just to differentiate the two versions of the applications running on the system. Now that we have our Docker images ready, let's go ahead and deploy the application. So I have this deployment v1.yml, which is of kind deployment with standard metadata name and labels. The spec replicas number is two. And if you see the spec containers, it uses the image microservice 1.0, which we just uh, generated. And note that the container port is 8080. So let's go ahead and deploy this. So we'll say kubectl apply dash f deployment v1.yml. So it says microservice v1 created. Let's watch the pods now. kubectl get po. So one is running, one is container creating. Okay, now both of them are running. 
so we have the deployment and the pods created now let's take a look at the service.yaml so i have this service.yaml here if you note uh, the kind is of type service it has the standard metadata name and labels this you can give anything as you wish as per your project uh, the spec dot type in this case we are selecting node port uh, there can be four types of services as we just saw in previous uh, slide selector is the most important one so here it says the selector is where the label matches app equal to microservice v1 now if you note the deployment uh, v1.yaml uh, for the containers we had the labels as app microservice dash v1 so what this means is this service object should uh, serve all the pods which are part of this deployment now coming to the ports there are three ports defined here so it's important that we understand the meaning of each port now the port attribute uh, determines the port on which the pods and other objects can reach this service within the cluster so if if some other pods needs to communicate with this service within the cluster it can do so on port 8081 target port is the port on which the container is running uh, the target pod so as we saw in deployment v1.yaml the container port is specified as 8080 so in this case in the service yaml we specify the target port as 8080 that's because the container is running on 8080 now node port is something that uh, it's a port which is exposed on the nodes which are part of the kubernetes cluster so you can access this uh, service from outside the cluster on a browser let's say using this port 31515 now note that the node port range is i mean the node port range has to be within 30000 and 32767 that's a limitation uh, with kubernetes if you try to give any other port it will throw an error so let's go ahead and deploy this service so we say kubectl apply dash f service dot yaml it says that service is created now let's go to the browser so if you see the url i'm saying localhost and the port is what we had given in the target port uh, which is 31515 and then the api path which is slash api slash hello so if you see it generated the output hello world version 1.0 and the ip and the ip address uh, it gave here is the ip of the pod which is 10.1.0.229 now one thing to note is let's say if i do kubectl get svc which is which stands for service dash o wide so this is the microservice SVC which we just created. It's of type node port. It has got its own IP address, which is 10.1.0.9.1.48.31. Um, the port it's exposed on is 80.81. And the selector, it says app equal to microservice dash v1, which we had given in the YAML. Now, if we do kubectl get endpoints dash o wide, um, you'll see here the name is same as the service that we created and there are two endpoints listed here so it happens that when you create a service it internally creates endpoints um, and each of these endpoints is nothing but the pod ip and the container port 8080 so if i do kubectl get pods dash o wide you'll see the two microservices and the ips are listed here 10.1.0.2.28 and 10.1.0.2.29 that's exactly what's listed in the endpoints here so this means that the service would be serving these two pods because it matched the label selector app equal to microservice v1 so this is how the endpoints are created it internally gets created as and when you create a service now let's take a look at the power of label selectors within the service uh, so we have our v1 app running so let's say i have another yaml file uh, 
let's say the app has a new version v2 so i have a deployment uh, object here the same replicas as two uh, uh, the label app is microservice dash v2 in this case um, and the container image if you see is microservice one colon 2.0 the earlier one was 1.0 and this is the newer version of the app which is 2.0 so let's go ahead and deploy this app as well so we'll say kubectl apply dash f deployment v2.yml so it says it's uh, created let's watch kubectl get pods so you see microservice v2 two pods are coming up it's container creating and now it's in a running state so as you see both v1 version and v2 version are currently running uh, but if you go to the browser and uh, hit refresh right it will always show 1.0 because the service is having label selector as microservice 1-v1 now let's say we want to test this new app that we have deployed right so how do we do that so all we do is go to the service.yml here put selector app equal to microservice dash v2 that's all we need to do and if i deploy it again kubectl apply dash f and service.yml it says the microservice svc is configured and now if we go to the browser and hit the refresh now you see uh, it shows hello world version 2.0 and uh, the ip would be corresponding to the ip of the pod with the version 2 let's uh, verify that so for so the ip address it showed here is 1010230 um, and 2.30 is this one which is microservice v2 so it shows that the service was able to redirect it to the v2 uh, microservice so that's the power of the label selector so this is how you can test your latest app changes and let's say if you find any faults you don't have to roll back the entire app just switch the label selector back to v1 and you would be uh, where you were before the uh, deployment so this is the power of the label selectors now in order to prove that uh, the service is actually uh, doing a serving request across the two micro two pods that are listed here so i have a small script which i would like to run which basically uh, it's an infinite loop which does a curl on the local host uh, slash api slash hello it will sleep for one seconds and it will print out the ip here so if you see 10 1, 0, 2, 30 and 231 it will alternate between these two which means it's serving the microservice v2 both the pods the 228 and 229 won't be listed uh, in the ip because that's the v1 microservice so as you see here it's 230 231 and alternating between the two so this proves that it's serving the both the pods uh, for microservice v2 now i want to show you one interesting thing where what happens if the pod goes down or new pods gets created so how does the service behave in that case so let's see kubectl get endpoints dash o wide so we have this endpoint microservice which is serving the two pods uh, with the ips listed here and let's get the pods as well get dash o so you see here it's serving 230 and 231 which is the microservice v2 now let's kill the second microservice v2 and see what happens so kubectl delete pod and then this microservice so it got deleted and the deployment should create a new pod on its own so if we do wide again you see there's a new one with container creating and uh, this is the one it created and it's a running state and you see the new ip is 10.1.0.2.32 now 
let's see what happens to the endpoint if we run the get endpoints again you see now it's showing 10.10.231 and 10.10.232 so it automatically detected that there's a new pod which came up and it started uh, serving the new pod so doesn't matter if the pod goes down or new pods come up as long as the label selector points to the right pods the service would be able to serve uh, the request to those pods so that's all i had to cover as part of this video about kubernetes services and endpoints hope you liked it thank you